Today we're going to go briefly through how to build a very simple data file in SPSS just to give you a little experience with this and help you go, uh, to complete your homework successfully for this topic. In 1997, a fellow by the name of Peter Diadamo came up with the uh, Eat Right for Your Blood Type diet. He theorized that your blood type would be influenced or would influence your diet and vice versa, that your body would handle certain foods in a certain way. So if you had a type A blood type, you should eat uh, vegan foods. This would help you lose weight. And he came up with three different lists, foods to eat, foods to avoid, and foods that would help you lose weight. And so he categorized the four blood types to these four di different diets. Uh, criticism of the diet is that, um, first of all, it's not really physiologically plausible, uh, but mainly there's not ever really been a test, uh, at least to date, that has uh, challenged his, uh, the practicality or the effectiveness of this diet. So let's pretend that we're going to do that, that we're going to randomize uh, 100 folks into three different groups. We're going to have uh, a group of people who, who are going to be on, uh, we're going to categorize their, their blood type and put them on one of his four diets. And then we're going to have another group that is on the blood type diet that has a calorie deficit built into it. They eat the proper foods, but we, we determine uh, a calorie deficit that will cause weight loss. And then we're going to give calorie deficit only and not restrict the types of foods that are eaten. So the first thing that we want to do is to build a code book. It's always a, it's just uh, absolutely impossible, in my opinion, to really go in and uh, build an SPSS file without taking the time to think through the variables that you're going to need, the level of measurement, and the type of statistics that you're going to tell SPSS to generate for you. Another good thing about a code book is if you develop one and you need help from a statistician or someone else to look at the data, they will know how you coded that information and will be able to look at the file and say, okay, this is what this means. Now, this is certainly not an exhaustive list of all the variables that we want to collect in such a study, but um, it's a little skeleton here. We have gender and we have blood type and race and age. These are traditionally, these are characteristics or demographics of most any study that you'd want to collect so that you can compare it to other studies that might be done. Uh, we're going to uh, rank their obesity based on their BMI and to do that we're going to need height and weight to calculate those two and if obviously we're going to need to know which uh, diet that these people are on. And so we think through, you know, gender is nominal, that means it's categorical and we can report number in percent. And since SPSS doesn't really understand words like this, we have to tell it, well, one is going to be equal to male and two is going to be equal to female. Blood type, again, is categorical, and we've got to tell SPSS how we're going to code it. And you can code this any way you want. You could say AB was one and, and B is two and so forth, but we have to come up with a way of coding it. Race, again, is nominal. And I just type three in here very quickly. Obviously, there's many more races that you could use. Age is an interval ratio level data. It's continuous. We will use the measures of central tendency to display that data. And we're going to do this in years. If you had little babies, you might use days. Or small children, you might want to use, um, you know, maybe years and months. But these are adults. Uh, ranking of obesity. Maybe way back uh, at one time in school, you learned that um, overweight is classified as a BMI of 24.9 up to 29.9 and stage 1 obesity is 30 to the 35 and so forth. So we can rank these. This is ordinal level data. It's categorical and this is how we're going to tell SPSS that 1 is going to be overweight, uh, 2 is going to be equal to grade 1 obesity and so forth. Weight will be to the nearest half pound and height will be to the half inch and BMI is also um, continuous level data and then the type of diet our subjects are on is nominal level. So let's go to um, to SPSS 
if I can get it to pull up and we'll get started. Now the first thing that we're going to uh, you, you'll see here that we need to go into data view and we need to enter our first variable and so our first variable is going to be the subject number Oh, we're in the wrong view. Sorry about that. Subject. And uh, actually, we're not going to worry about this too much because it's just going to be the number of our uh, cases. So let's move on down and do gender. It's also going to be numeric. We're not doing string data we really don't need decimals you can't be 1.5 male or 1.5 female so we'll leave that there with you're just supposed to tell it how many integers you need uh, most of the time I don't worry about this either but obviously if one is going to be for male and two for female we don't need eight different integers we could take the time to reduce this down to one which is fine um, label this is where we can put a little more information uh, you're restricted as to how many characters you can type in this first box. So if, if we really wanted to um, enter some more information, we could do that here. Gender of subjects. And here's where we do the value. So we're going to say value 1 is going to be male. And we're going to do 2 is female. You won't have to do this for everything. This is only for your categorical data and you hit OK and we need to tell SPSS that this is nominal level so that's your first one. Let's move on down. Let's do blood type. A, B, O. Again it's numeric. Again we really don't need eight integers but most people just leave it standard. We don't need decimal points either because you can't have uh, blood type it has a decimal point. I don't know why this kept going. And so here we'll say blood type of subject. And here's where we add our values. And so we say that one is going to be type O just as our code book said. And two is going to be type A. Again, this is so helpful. You can remember how you coded things. Type B. And 4 was going to be type AB. And we add that and we hit OK. And again, we have to tell SPSS that this is nominal level data. Let's pick uh, ordinal character. Let's do. Um, um, overweight class again it's numeric and again we don't need all these I don't know why it keeps doing this so let's have to do that first and now we can um, well stubborn all right so this is going to be classification of overweight or obesity. And again, it's categorical. Uh, we said that um, we we're going to use one for overweight condition, and two is going to be stage 1 obesity and 3 is going to be stage 2 obesity and 4 is probably just going to be morbid obesity now a better way to do this might be to actually put in the BMI numbers here since you're going to have a column that says BMI it'd be pretty easy to put those columns right beside each other and as you go down through there, but um, we can think, worry about that if we were doing a real study. And then over here, we were going to say that's ordinal level data because we are ranking people. Uh, let's do a continuous variable, and that would be age. 
again numeric um, here we can use two and uh, we don't need decimals because we said we're going to do age in years and we don't really need to enter any values it's continuous level data so we leave it there at scale it's scale is considered uh, interval ratio ratio data I guess we could do one more let's see how about um, how about we do type of diet do this first so it'll stop we'll do again we only need one integer there's a four there let's go back to well, I guess we need two because we're going to have people who are 22 32 we won't have anybody that's 100 I'm sure uh, and then the type of diet is going to be um, type of weight loss diet and now we have to go back to ascribing values uh, we'll say that one is the blood type diet and two is going to be blood type diet calorie deficit and number three is just going to be a calorie deficit diet and you could even add a fourth group if you want to randomize to four different groups people who were just not on any kind of diet and then our uh, categorical data so we won't go through the uh, entering all the rest of this the uh, actual BMI and the height and all of that let's go to data view this is where you actually take your hundreds of subjects and you start entering their data one at a time so we said subject we say we have subject number one and we say he is a male so we'll enter one for male his blood type was type uh, was type B so we enter a th three little lettuce and overweight class we're going to give him a classification of a two and he is 55 he is going to be randomized to group one and we would continue on out through here for every variable that we have information on and now subject number two maybe this is a female and maybe she has a blood type that is type O and classification of overweight might be three and she's 42 and she's going to be randomized to group two which was the blood type diet with calorie deficit so you just continue on till you get hundreds and hundreds of subjects uh, entered into your into your data view and uh, now once you've done that you are ready to run some statistical tests your descriptives and then your inferential where you actually compare the weights of these folks after a 12-week run-in on the diet so hope this is helpful